Chinese place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees please leave the main floor of the chambers? We have additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of December 19th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag to the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Here. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Eugene. Gibson. I am here. Jonai. Gradenchik. Holden. Kalos. I can do this all day here. King. Ku. Bosen. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander, Levin, Levine, Lewis, here, Mizell, Menchaca, Presente, Mizell, thank you, Miller, Lanceman, Moya. Perkins. Here. Powers. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Vallone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Yossi. Blasovsky, the spiritual leader of Chabad Labavitch of Northeast Queens, located at 212-12, 26th Avenue in Bayside. Thank you to my dear friend, Councilman Paul Vallone, for inviting me here today at the request of Speaker Johnson to deliver the invocation. Today's invocation is especially momentous as it is ushering in 2020. I feel privileged to be here, particularly as a Chabad Lubavitch rabbi, due to the very special connection between Chabad Lubavitch and New York City going back to 1940, when New York was chosen as the headquarters for the movement and the Grand Rebbe, Rabbi Schneerson, took up his residence in Brooklyn. Almighty God, Master of the Universe, the members of this august body, the New York City Council, convene here from across the great city of New York to conduct the people's business in good faith and with selfless dedication. In so doing, they fulfill a fundamental precept, which according to sacred biblical tradition, you first issued to Adam at the time of his creation and to Noah after the great flood the commandment to govern by just laws. We, the citizens of this blessed country, the United States of America, 
proudly proclaim this recognition and affirm our commitment to justice in the Pledge of Allegiance when we describe our union as one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. This coming Sunday evening, Jewish people the world over begin celebrating Hanukkah. Hanukkah, the festival of lights, recalls the victory more than 2,000 years ago of a militarily weak but spiritually strong Jewish people over the mighty forces of a ruthless enemy that had overrun the Holy Land and threatened to engulf the land and its people in darkness. The miraculous victory has been celebrated annually ever since during these eight days of Hanukkah, especially by lighting the menorah. Light is one of the most powerful creations of God. A little bit of light dispels a lot of darkness. Indeed, while a single candle might seem weak, unable to accomplish much, it has the power to illuminate and overcome the forces of darkness, something so critical in these uncertain times. Almighty God, you have chosen each and every council member and granted them power and authority. We ask you to guide them with your light. Let them connect to your illumination to become beacons of light to their communities. May they become sources of inspiration for their constituents, that they too can bring light to their homes, their families, and their surroundings. May we all be empowered to remember the potential that you have given us, and may none of us underestimate the power of one light, one mitzvah, one good deed. We beseech you, almighty and merciful God, to extend your grace to each and every member of this body and bestow upon them the joy of life, good health and prosperity, so together they can bring light to this great city. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi Blasovsky, for that beautiful and inspiring prayer. I'd now like to call Councilmember Vallone to spread the invocation on the record. Please quiet in the chambers. Thank you, Madam Advocate. I'd like to make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Granted. And I'd also like to say a few words about my dear friend, Rabbi Yossi. Uh, there's few times in our lives when we get to meet someone who actually makes an impact on you and everyone around you. For me, it was the day that I met Rabbi Yossi in, in Bayside in Northeast Queens. Uh, it is, it's an honor to bring him here to our home since he brings everyone to his home. His, his center truly is a spiritual connection for all faiths, for all people, for our community. He stands with us as we lead the Children's Holiday Parade up Bayside on Bell Boulevard. He leads his community in all different groups and faiths. He stands and he lights the largest menorah in Queens. If you want to come this Sunday, he'll be there up uh, dangerously lighting the largest menorah in Queens. But more importantly, he is a good man. And he is a man that leads with his heart. And in today's times, with that message of light over darkness, in all of our faiths, we celebrate this month, the light over darkness in so many different ways. It's a very special month. Uh, and Rabbi Yossi embodies that, his wife, his children. Everything about they, what they do is a reason why I couldn't be more proud that he is here today. Uh, back in 1990, he started in a small apartment and Bayside, and now he has a thriving community center right, on Bell, uh, right in Bayside next to Bay Terrace. So many of us gather there to hear his word, and in times of need, uh, Monday at 8 o'clock, he has a Bible study where all are welcome. And yes, me, uh, the good Catholic, will go into Rabbi's place, and we share a beautiful evening on Monday nights at 8 o'clock. And I find more comfort and spiritual peace with him and his family than I pretty much find anywhere. And so for him to come and give this blessing today uh, is an honor not just for me, for all of us to hear it. So God bless you, Rabbi Yossi, and may you have a beautiful Hanukkah and a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you so much for spreading the invocation so beautifully. I think it's so wonderful that on the eve of the Christmas and Hanukkah season, we have had recognition through a proclamation to uh, 
Muhammad Ali Jinnah and the recognition of Pakistan and its founding 143 years ago, as well as having you here today has been such an honor and a privilege and shows the diversity of this city council and how we're able to recognize all cultures and all faiths. I'd now like to move on to the adoption of minutes um, by council member Al Alika Amprey Samuel. I motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of November 14th, 2019 be adopted as printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Pre-considered M199 through pre-considered M201 budget modifications. Finance. M202 five-year capital plan amendment. Finance. Pre-considered M203 and M204 youth board appointments. Rules, privileges, and elections. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? None. Thank you. We'll now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Shh. Quiet in the chamber. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo, and thank everyone for being here today on this very important state. It's the last of the year and the last of the decade, but before I celebrate our accomplishments, I want to begin by honoring a few notable losses our city has faced. We were all shocked by the horrible anti-Semitic hate crime in Jersey City that occurred last week where Jersey City Detective Joseph Seals was killed. The 40-year-old died protecting the city he cared so much about and the council sends our condolences to his family in this time of mourning. I paid a shiva call on Sunday night with council member 11 to the Deutsch family in Williamsburg who lost their wonderful 24 year old son, Moisha Deutsch, who was visiting Jersey City and was killed in that kosher supermarket. And our hearts and prayers go out to the entire community in Williamsburg, a close-knit community, as well as the Deutsch family who is still mourning. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family that lost one of the owners of the kosher supermarket, Mindy Fetzer, who was killed and gunned down by these domestic terrorists. And lastly, the story of uh, the man, an Ecuadorian immigrant, who was working that day at the kosher supermarket and really sacrificed his own life to save a young Jewish man by leading him out the back door of the supermarket. And while he was doing that, he was gunned down by these two terrorists. He saved a life. And we honor all four of these individuals and their families. Anti-Semitism is intolerable, and as we know, it is happening too frequently around the world, around the country, and even here in New York City and all five boroughs, we must always, always, always speak out against the evils of anti-Semitism. Tomorrow, December 20th, also marks the five-year anniversary of the deaths of Detective Wen John Liu, a seven-year veteran of the NYPD, and Detective Rafael Ramos, a two-year veteran of the department. They were murdered in the line of duty, assassinated and targeted because they were police officers. Our hearts remain with their families as they continue to grieve even these many years later. And we are forever grateful for the service of Detectives Lou and Ramos and for the members of the department who continue to serve our city every single day. If everyone could please stand for a moment of silence as we remember the four victims in Jersey City and detectives Wen Jean Lu and Rafael Ramos. Thank you. As we gear up for a new year, I want to acknowledge a few changes that are going to be happening here at the council. Sadly, very sadly, two of our most valuable voices here 
at the council, Lillian Pascone and Camille Chinky Fat are leaving for new adventures. Lillian has been a steady and trusted advisor in some of our most important work, including the closure of Rikers Island. She put in long, long, long hours and poured over thousands of pages of documents to make sure that we got it right. She is one of my favorite people. I'm going to be very sad to not see her when I come into City Hall every single day. And she is uh, leaving us for uh, New Orleans and love, but not in that order. And I am just so grateful for everything that she has done for me and for all of us uh, these, this past year and a half. The city will be forever grateful for her hard work. Uh, and I want to say that uh, Camille Chinky Fat has helped make sure things run smoothly for everyone at the council. Her work has touched everyone here, and we are so, so grateful for her service. She's going on to, where is she? Where's Camille? She's going on to, uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to announce it, but she's going, I'm not, I'm allowed to announce it? Okay. So she's going on to be the chief of staff for the new district attorney, Melinda Katz, in the borough of Queens. And so the, the people of Queens, uh, the people of Queens uh, are lucky to have her and her service. Uh, and I really, really just uh, am, am deeply grateful for everything that Camille has done for the previous speaker of the council, for myself. She has been just an invaluable, wonderful member of the senior staff here, and we are going to miss her very, very much. But we know that her service continues here in city government. We're also bidding farewell to one of our transportation councils, James DiGiovanni, who has done a fabulous, fabulous job in being a counsel for the Transportation Committee. He was an instrumental and key person in working on the state, of a, the state of the City Address and the Master Street Plan and all the bills that went through the committee uh, he worked on. And he was recently honored as an emerging leader in transportation by the NYU Rudin Center for his work. But it turns out that James is not going too far as he will be the Assistant General Counsel at the Taxi and Limousine Commission. And so we are happy that his service continues for the city of New York. And uh, my best to James. I want to thank him. Can we get a big, rousing round of applause for Lillian, Camille, and James and everything they have done for this city? As I mentioned, this is our last stated, and the council has had a year to be proud of. Together, we are closing Rikers Island and creating a more humane criminal justice system. We created the Office of Hate Crimes, which unfortunately has been so sorely needed. We created a streets master plan to make our streets safer and more pedestrian friendly. We cracked down on placard abuse. We passed the Climate Mobilization Act. We overhauled commercial waste zones. And in one of our most important acts for New York families, we significantly toughened our lead laws to protect our children and held the city accountable for inexcusable lapses in ensuring that apartments are truly free of lead. We have accomplished so much together, and I look forward to working alongside all of you next year to do even more for the city we all love. I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. Uh, happy Hanukkah, which is starting up in a few days. A uh, Happy Kwanzaa. It is a special time of year for all of us and for our families and our loved ones. Uh, Merry Christmas, Mom. I love you. Uh, she watches this, so uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, she goes on that clunky council website and dials in. Um, and now let's dive into our legislative agenda. We will be voting on the following land use items. Two applications in Councilmember Bill Perkins' district, La Hermosa, a uh, rezoning that will facilitate a new residential tower, and MMN 1902 117th Street, which is a tax exemption that will enable much needed repairs <clears throat> for three buildings and the preservation of 41 units of affordable housing. Lastly, there is a citywide POPs text amendment 
that would update the existing public space symbol and permit movable tables and chairs to be placed in plazas. We'll be voting on the following finance items, an expense budget modification, a revenue budget modification, and a capital budget modification. On the, on the expense budget modification, and I want to thank Chair Drum for his work on all of these, I'm really pleased to see the changes reflected in the modification that will effectuate some of the really important funding that was part of the budget agreement that we all struck back in June. In particular, the budget mod includes $54 million for the indirect rate increase for human service contracts so that our nonprofit partners can better afford to provide the vital services on which our constituents rely every day on. We rely on these nonprofits to help New Yorkers get the service services they need to thrive, and they should not have to scramble to pay their bills. This mod also shows the funding for the pay parity agreement for critical public sector workers, including $29 million for early childhood education providers and $7.4 million for legal service providers so that these workers are paid fairly. We will also be voting on five Article 11 property tax exemptions for affordable housing developments, including William R. Anderson in Councilmember Levine's district, 1632 Hutchinson River Parkway East in Councilmember Jonai's district, 1414 Walton Avenue in Councilmember Cabrera's district, 254 East 184th Street in Councilmember Torres's district, Evergreen and Ty Bout Pillars in Councilmember Torres's district, and moving on, the council will be voting on the following piece of legislation. First, the council will be voting on a street co-naming bill up for vote today, pre-considered introduction uh, would co-name 55 thoroughfares and public places based on the request of council members in whose district the street sign is being located. And I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Christopher Sartori, Patrick Mulvihill, Chima Obichere, and Monica Bujak. Next, we have a civil service and labor package of bills. Resolution number 40A, sponsored by Councilmember Robert Cornegie, would call on the New York City Employees Retirement System, NICERS, to determine that members are disabled for purposes of receiving city disability pensions if first the State Workers' Compensation Board determines that the member has a permanent partial disability, and also, second, the U.S. Social Security Administration determines that the member is disabled for for substantial work activity and approved for Social Security disability benefits. And I want to thank the staff that worked on that bill, Nusha Chowdhury and Kevin Katowski. Next, introduction number 1604B, sponsored by Councilmember I. Danique Miller, our chair of the Civil Service and Labor Committee, would require the collection of workers' compensation data about occupational diseases to help keep our workers safer and healthier. This bill also requires each agency to develop and implement an annual accident and illness program designed to reduce workplace injuries and illnesses identified in the report and the mayor to submit a report on steps the city will take to develop programs to mitigate occupational injury and illnesses. I want to thank the staff again. I want to thank Nusat Chowdhury and also Malcolm Butehorn. Next, we have two bills, introduction number 1786 and introduction 1810, both sponsored by our chair, Chair Miller, well, that would extend health insurance coverage benefits specifically to the surviving spouses, domestic partners, and children of two city employees who were tragically killed while on the job. Matthew Jukabowski, who worked at the Department of Sanitation, was killed on September 24, 2019, and Eduardo Calle Abril, who worked at the Department of Transportation, was killed on October 22, 2019, and I want to thank Nusa Chaudhry for her work on those two pieces of legislation. Next up, we have a package of education bills that are aimed at holding the Department of Education accountable and increasing transparency. There are nearly 200,000 public school students uh, who receive special education services in our city. <clears throat> the council hears too many stories from frustrated parents that their children are not getting the special education services they are entitled to. It's unacceptable and it's heartbreaking. These bills will help keep the Department of Education accountable to providing required special education services. These are not options and the DOE must help these families and students. 
Proposed introduction number 900A, sponsored by Councilmember Ben Kalos, would amend Local Law 27 of 2015 to require the Department of Education to report tri-annually rather than annually on its provision of special education services in compliance with the student's IEPs. The bill would also add assistive technology services and special transportation services to the enumerated list of services that students with disabilities are entitled to on which the DOE is required to report. Next, proposed introduction number 1406A, sponsored by Councilmember Danny Drum, would require the New York City Department of Education to annually report on several indicators <clears throat> regarding its evaluation of preschool aged children for special education services and the provision of such services. The bill also requires the Department of Education, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, rather, to annually report on the provision of early intervention services to eligible infants and toddlers with disabilities. And proposed introduction number 1380A, sponsored by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, would require the New York City Department of Education to annually report on special education claims by parents for reimbursement for tuition or services for the preceding academic year. The bill will report on the time frame for that process from initial submission of the claim by a parent to the DOE paying out that claim. The bill would also require the department to report on a number of impartial hearing officers certified by the state to cover New York City, how many of those hearing officers had their certifications revoked by the state, and how many cases hearing officers accused themselves from. Next, proposed introduction, we have a proposed introduction and we have a resolution by our education chair, Mark Traeger, who did a magnificent job uh, working on this package of bills, hearing these bills and getting them to the finish line. His first bill would amend Local Law 27 of 2015 to require the Department of Education to disaggregate by school its report on individualized education program compliance rates and provide the number and percentage of students by school that are receiving full services they are entitled to, and his resolution, number 749A, would call upon the Department of Education to create a chief compliance officer position within the department to ensure they are in compliance with the Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, it's the IDEA Act at the federal level. The chief compliance officer would ensure that the DOE is meeting its legal mandate to provide all the special education services a student with disabilities is entitled to under the IDEA Act. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Malcolm Butehorn and Smita Deshmukh. Proposed introduction number 948A, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres. This bill would require the Department of Housing, Preservation and Development to select a list of 50 buildings based on factors that indicate the building owner has failed to comply with the heating requirements set forth in the Housing Maintenance Code. This bill would then require these owners to install an internet-capable temperature reporting device in each dwelling unit for up to four years, and this bill would also require HPD to conduct targeted inspections of buildings on that list every two weeks for the duration of the heat season, and I want to thank Audrey Sohn for her work on that bill. Proposed introduction number 1710A is sponsored by Council Member Donovan Richards. This bill would extend the J-51 tax exemption and abatement program through June 30th, 2020, and would also raise the assessed value limitation on the units eligible for this program from $35,000 to $40,000. And finally, we are considering a very, very important and timely bill that addresses one of the biggest problems we are facing as a city, and that is the homelessness crisis. Introduction 1211A will require developers who receive city funds to set aside 15% of the units for those who are experiencing homelessness. This is a revolutionary change in policy that is both necessary, right, and urgent. Close to 80,000 people are experiencing homelessness right now in New York City, including tens of thousands of children. This is not sustainable, and I'm so proud that the City Council is taking bold action today to address this existential threat to our city. I really, really, really want to commend Councilmember Salamanca, 
who has worked tirelessly on this bill. And he has not just worked on this bill. In his own district, he has worked on every project that's gone through ULERP to ensure there was a significant set aside for homeless families and individuals. And that, in his partnership with the How's Our Future New York Coalition, led to this bill being drafted and the advocacy that has happened on it over the last year. So he's going to uh, talk in a few minutes, but I'm really grateful for the Coalition of the Homeless, for Vocal New York, for uh, Giselle from the How's Our New York Coalition campaign. Uh, I'm really grateful to Ms. Flowers, who I see sitting up there, uh, who is a wonderful and great New Yorker, and everyone who has made this day a reality. Everyone who lives, works, and visits our city knows we are grappling with an unprecedented homelessness crisis, and today the council is taking steps to tackle this issue head on. So proposed introduction 1211A, sponsored by Councilmember Salamanca, will require developers who receive city financial assistance for new construction of housing development projects to set aside at least 15% of dwelling units offered for rent in each housing development project for homeless individuals and their families. The Department of Housing, Preservation and Development would be required to report annually to the mayor and the speaker of the council the number of units set aside for homeless individuals and families in each city finance housing development project and housing preservation project. And I want to thank the staff who worked tirely, uh, tirelessly on this, Michelle Lee, Andrea Vasquez, Raju Mann, Jason Goldman, and uh, there were many, many others. I am grateful to everyone's hard work on this important bill. And Madam Majority Leader, before I uh, uh, give it back to you, I want to <clears throat> allow Council Member I want to allow Councilmember Salamanca uh, some additional time from speaker time to speak on this historic occasion, on this historic bill, and I want to give him the time necessary. And I also want to make the offer to, to Chair Traeger if he wants to speak on this package of bills on special education. Uh, I want to set aside time for him as well to talk about how important this package of bill is for children who are getting special education in their families in their city. So first, Madam Majority Leader, I want to turn it over to Councilmember Salamanca. Thank, thank you, uh, Speaker Johnson. Last October, I introduced intro 1211, which would require residential development projects receiving city subsidies to set aside 15% of units for homeless individuals and families. At the time of introduction, the city was on the verge of setting records for all the wrong reasons. Nearly 63,000 New Yorkers facing a combination of changing communities rising rents, stagnant wages, domestic violence, or adversaries in their personal life woke up and went to sleep each day in a New York City shelter. Thousands more feeling unsafe in shelters chose a life on the streets. Listening to stories from advocates like Ms. Flowers, a fierce advocate for increased set-asides, and a homeless New Yorker herself resonated for many just how much more we had to do as a city to address this crisis. The numbers were startling. At its peak, 63,839 New Yorkers resided in a city shelter. Most upsetting, as a parent to a five-year-old, over 22,000 children, 22,000 children, a majority of them under the age of six, spent their formative years bouncing from shelter to shelter. Despite the critical juncture, the city's housing policy has failed to produce a fraction of the new units needed to match the scale of the homeless crisis. Homelessness in New York City, per report from the Coalition for the Homeless, has reflected a bleak reality that has not been since the Great Depression. Working with partners from the House Our Future campaign, we took our message to City Hall and across the city to rally the importance of a citywide policy requiring a 15% set aside as a project by project basis. The message was clear. Until more permanent housing for the homeless was built, the problem will only get worse. To show that this was a policy that could work, I began instituting a 15% set aside in projects in my district. Over the course of a year and a half, I am proud to have secured 121 units of housing for homeless individuals and families in eight 
projects in my district. While a small return in the grand scheme of things, it showed the impact citywide legislation could have if implemented across the five boroughs. Homelessness is not an issue limited just to the South Bronx. Homelessness affects all of us, and it is felt in each one of our council districts. As developments grow taller and rents rise at a frantic pace, the reality is many of our constituents are one paycheck away from being homeless. The homelessness crisis and the affordable housing crisis are a very much a reality. And if we're going to address the two, we need to implement bold measures. We have the opportunity to change the landscape of our housing and homelessness policy for the better. Today's vote on intro 1211 is about giving hope to thousands of men, women, and children who are looking for a place to call home. Rather than seeking band-aid solutions, so Intro 1211 sets us on a path to create what we need most to address the issue at hand. Thousands of units of new permanent housing for homeless. At moments like this, we will be judged on how we respond to one of the greatest challenges of our times. I urge my colleagues to stand with homeless advocates and the 63,000 people who call a New York City shelter home and vote in favor of Intro 1211. The push to pass Intro 1211 was far from an individual effort. First and foremost, I would like to thank Speaker Johnson for his leadership and commitment to ensuring that the most vulnerable New Yorkers are not forgotten. From the Speaker's office, I would like to thank Jason Goldman, Raju Mann, Jeff Baker, Andrea Vasquez, Michelle Lee, Andre Sun, and Austin Bradford. I would also like to thank my colleagues in the City Council for their overwhelming support of this bill, including co-sponsor Steve Levin for his continual leadership on the issues of homelessness and his role as Chairman of the Committee on General Welfare. I would also like to thank my team, Brian Haiti, John Sakaro, and Lauren Suboyama. Last but not least, we would not be here if it weren't for the dedicated groups of advocates who've never missed an opportunity to speak out on the need for more housing and services for the homeless. Whether it was at rallies, marches, teachings, sleepouts, or on social media, they never wavered in their mission on behalf of the city's most vulnerable. I must thank Giselle and Coalition for the Homeless, Ms. Flowers and Paulette from Vocal New York, Urban Pathways, Neighbors Together, Interfaith Assembly on Homelessness and Housing, Care for the Homeless, Housing Works, Human.NYC, Homeless Services United, Picture the Homeless, win and the entire House Our Future campaign. On behalf of the 62,000 people who woke up this morning in a New York City shelter, and to the countless members, or, and to the countless numbers of advocates who have passionately lobbied for more permanent housing, I dedicate to vote, I dedicate this vote to you. And today, I will probably vote aye on intro 1211A. Thank you. Congratulations, Rafael. Have a great day. Congratulations. Before I, before I turn it over to uh, Chair Traeger, uh, I was remiss because one of the longest, one of the people who's been here the longest at the council is sadly leaving, but is going to be continuing his service in city government. Uh, Fatim Shabani is also leaving the council. He has been at the council for uh, 12 years working in the finance division, working in the administrative division, and uh, he is going to go work at the public advocate's office, so he's not going far, and we're really grateful for his service over the last 12 years, and we wish him good luck moving forward, and I really want, he's standing over here, I really want to congratulate him. Now I want to turn it over to Chair Traeger to talk about this important package of bills today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, in February of this year, the Committee on Education held a hearing, a sobering hearing, on the delivery of special education services to New York City Public School students. At that hearing, we heard from parents, students, advocates, and special education providers, and we learned what we knew all along. The DOE is deficient in providing the legally mandated services that more than 200,000 students with disabilities are entitled to. We learned about a broken system that lacks needed transparency. 
We learned about the extraordinary steps parents and guardians must take in order for their children to get the most basic of educational services. Nearly 20% of students in this school system are students with disabilities, or 224,160 students. To put that into better perspective, the Houston Independent School District, which Chancellor Carranza used to be superintendent of, has a total student population of 214,175 students. DOE reported in their latest special education report, thanks to Chair Drum, that only 78.4% of school-age students with IEPs in DOE settings were fully receiving their recommended services, 19.1% were receiving partial services, and 2.5% didn't receive any services. Further, even more disappointing, in 2018, only roughly 50% of students with disabilities graduated from high school within four years. So when we hear the mayor and the chancellor talk about graduation rates going up, let's not forget students with IEPs and also our English language learners. I acknowledge that DOE has made some attempts of improvements, but as we learned at the hearing, so much more work is needed to be done. Today, we begin that, that additional work. The package of legislation we're voting on today will not only provide more granular data on DOE's compliance with delivering special education services, but also a new level of reporting for preschool students and early intervention services. Together, these bills will provide parents, advocates, and policymakers in this council with the, with the information necessary to hold the DOE accountable. I'm proud to have two pieces of legislation moving forward at today's stated. My bill, Introduction 559A, will require the DOE to expand its current reporting on IEP plan compliance rates to include reporting on a school level. This will provide a more holistic picture of what is happening in more than 1,800 schools. Most importantly, this bill highlights what services students are not receiving in that school, which will help ensure more transparency and accountability. Look, we just passed and got a PTA fundraising re reporting bill, which gives us a clearer picture of the depths of inequity across zip codes in our school system. We deserve to know which neighborhoods, which zip codes are not seeing the resources to meet the needs of our kids. Also, Resolution 749A encourages the DOE to create a special education chief compliance officer position to ensure and to proactively ensure that students with IEPs are a priority and that a DOE is in compliance with Federal Individuals and Disabilities Education Act, IDEA. Our students deserve the best and these bills will make sure that there is true accountability. I want to thank the speaker for his leadership and getting these bills to the finish line. I also want to give a big, huge shout out to Jason Goldman, Jeff Baker, Laura Popa, Smita Deshmuk, Andrea Vasquez, Malcolm Buterhorn, Kalima Johnson, Jen Atwell, Anna Scaife, and Vanessa Ogle from my staff, from my staff and I ask my colleagues to please vote in support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Chair, and I would turn it back to Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, and congratulations to all of my colleagues on this groundbreaking legislation. We will now move into discussion of general orders. I'll call on Council Member Ben Kalos. Our education system has been failing one in five children with disabilities by failing to give them the mandated services they need to perform. New York City Public Schools had 224,160 students with disabilities, nearly 40,000 receiving only partial or none of their mandated services uh, during the 2017-2018 school year, according to Local Law 27 of 2015 law, authored by Council Member Danny Drum. This led then public advocate, now Attorney General Letitia James to sue the DOE over their failure to track and thereby deprive disabled students of necessary assistance. James introduced Introduction 900 on May 9th, 2018. I was proud to co-sponsor this introduction then and I am now even more proud to carry it over the finish line. This bill seeks to guarantee that students with disabilities receive the necessary services by increasing reporting from annual to three times a school year and expanding what is reported to include speech therapy, counseling, occupational therapy, physical therapy, hearing education services, vision education services, assistive technology services, and special transportation services. Vote yes so that over 224,000 students with disabilities that we will be able to finally get them the resources they desperately need. 
Thank you to Tish James for taking this issue to court and authoring what will be a vital law. Thank you to Education Committee Chair Mark Traeger and the committee staff for your work on this intro. A special thank you to Speaker Johnson for making this bill package passing today a priority. The parents of children needing these services are very grateful, as are the kids themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. We will now go into a report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil Service and Labor, intro 1604B, workers' compensation data. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1786 and intro 1810, health insurance benefits. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, intro 559A and intro 900A, student IEPs. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1380A and intro 1406A, school reporting bills. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered Reso 1198, transparency resolution. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered M199 and Reso 1203 through pre-considered M201 and Reso 1205, budget modifications. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 592 and Reso 1206 through pre-considered LU 596 and Reso 1210, tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, intro 948A, heat inspections. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1211A. HPD set aside units. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1710A J51 program. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 590 and Reso 1211, Lemley West 117th Street. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation and pre considered intro 1825, street co namings. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, M196 and Reso 1212, approving the reappointment of Kenneth Knuckles, Planning Commission. Uh, before I uh, say that's coupled on general orders, I, I, I didn't, mess, I didn't uh, mention earlier, uh, though we had gone through the agenda, that I want to thank the Rules, Privileges, and Elections Committee and Chair Kozlowitz for the two nominations that we are voting on today, recommendations from the mayor. And now we see that there are a couple of more uh, from the TLC and from the City Planning Commission uh, and from the Tax Commission and from the Youth Board that are uh, coming to the Rules, Privileges, and Elections Committee as well. And so with that, Mr. Cook, coupled on general orders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. M197 and Reso 1213, approving the reappointment of Thomas V. Nichols, Tax Commission. Coupled to general orders. M198 and Reso 1214, approving the reappointment of Francis Henn, Tax Commission. Coupled to general orders. Preconsidered M203 and Reso 1215, approving the recommendation of Christopher Bastardi, Youth Board. Coupled in general orders. Pre-considered M204 and Reso 1216, approving the recommendation of Melanie Cruvelis, Youth Board. Coupled in general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 564 and Reso 1217 through LU 567 and Reso 1220. Coupled in general orders. LU 581 and Reso 1221, zoning amendment. Coupled in general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled in general orders, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Lewis. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on general orders calendar and all resolutions, I vote aye. Permission granted. Levine. Thank you, and with your permission, Madam Public Advocate, I too would like to vote on all land use call-ups and coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Thank you for the promotion and permission granted. <laughs> Good Adams. Chance. I vote aye. Excuse me, Adams. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Majority Leader. I am so proud today to have sponsored um, three street co-namings in my district that we're voting on today. Detective Lawrence Cecil Smith, a hero and mentor of the 113th Precinct, and the historic Punjab Avenue and Gudwara Street, two unprecedented recognitions in Richmond Hill celebrating our Punjabi and Sikh communities this is unprecedented in our community. In addition, I celebrate the much deserved street co-naming of Reverend Floyd H. Flake Way in Councilmember Miller's district, honoring the architect and builder of senior housing, retail, education, and so much more in our community. He also happens to be my very own pastor. And for that, we revere him we thank him for all that he has done, and we salute our pastor, Reverend Dr. Floyd H. Flagg. 
With that, I vote aye on all, with the exception of 1211A, which I must abstain due to the potential impact on the Southeast Queens community by which my colleague, Council Member Miller, will elaborate during his remarks. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Baron. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I wasn't here at the last stated, but I do want to take some time to acknowledge that 515 Blake Avenue was voted on, and I want to thank the speaker, and I especially want to thank the members of the zoning committee and also uh, Raju Man, Man, who did a fantastic job negotiating that project. And what happened with that project was that it was proposed to have a shelter to replace an existing shelter. They were going to build a brand new shelter and add additional housing. And we were able to get the uh, HPD to understand that we don't need shelters, we need permanent housing. And it addresses what my colleague is introducing today as well. And in that project, we're going to have 30% of the housing apartments there set aside for formerly homeless. I commend my colleague, Councilmember Salamanca. He's been talking about this for quite some time. And I commend you. Glad to see this bill and to vote on it and support you in that regard. And I'm voting aye on all with the exception of 564 through 581. No. 564 through 567 and the accompanying resolutions. Thank you. I'm abstaining on that one. Borelli. I on all except uh, 1211A, uh, which despite my no vote, I commend uh, the sponsor uh, for his very earnest hard work on the measure. Brennan. Aye. Matteo. No one 1211, I and the rest. Cabrera, Chin. Congratulations to all my colleagues on passing important legislation, especially Councilmember Salamanca. And uh, I vote aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. I want to congratulate Councilmember Salamanca on his uh, amazing bill today, as well as Councilmember Traeger for his very important bills. And happy holidays to all my colleagues, and happy new year as well. And uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cornegy. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. With many congratulations to Salamanca and Mark Traeger on their amazing bills and all the rest of my colleagues, I vote aye and happy holidays. Eugene. I vote aye and happy holidays to all my colleagues and all the staff from the speaker office and also all our staff. All staff, regardless of where they are working, what they are doing, I want to thank them and congratulate them and wish them a very happy and peaceful holiday. With that, I vote aye. Gibson. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues. I want to join with all of you in congratulating our education chair, Councilmember Traeger, on his leadership on issues related to so many of our special education students. Um, I represent many of them, those with disabilities and IEPs, District 75, in my school, District 9, and I know this legislation will have a positive impact on children and their families. Um, I wanted to speak in favor of, of another piece of legislation on today's agenda, uh, introed by Councilmember Richie Torres, that relates to the installation of heating devices and sensors in certain apartments. We know with the winter season <coughs> upon us, many families are living in homes where they do not receive sufficient heat and hot water. And this legislation will really move HPD forward in identifying those apartments that are the most in need. And these heating sensors will be able to provide HPD with the information on those apartments which are in dire need of heat and hot water. Um, and finally, I wanted to join with all of you in commending our land use chair, Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, and all of the housing advocates and the 
uh, How's Our Future campaign. Honored to be a sponsor of this bill as someone who represents a tremendous amount of family shelters in my district. It is incumbent upon all of us to make sure that we share in a citywide burden. The same communities that absorb shelters should not also be the same communities that absorb all of the affordable housing across this city. We have to do better. We have to make sure that as a city we lead, and this bill is going to allow us to do that, to make sure that we are a part of the solution in bringing much needed affordable and permanent housing for those who are the most in need. And so I join Councilmember Salamanca in congratulating him and all of the members of the campaign, the Coalition for the Homeless and Vocal and Interfaith Assembly and everyone who was a part of this campaign. Congratulations to you all and thank you, Ms. Flowers. And I vote aye on all and happy holidays to all of my colleagues and your families. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Joan I. Gordenchik. Uh, thank you. Just briefly, um, I want to thank my colleague uh, Donovan Richards for shepherding uh, Intro 1710A, uh, which will provide um, some modest relief for homeowners in Eastern Queens, about, well, 20,000 of my homeowners, uh, mostly people living in middle-income uh, co-ops. So thank you, Donovan. I want to thank the speaker for getting it to the floor today. I want to thank the people who enabled this legislation in the Assembly and the State Senate, uh, Assemblyman Ed Bronstein, and State Senator Toby Ann Stavisky. I also want to thank uh, my colleague Mark Traeger, my chair, um, for the package of bills that hopefully will produce better results um, for children with special needs. Uh, I have uh, many, many schools in my district, standalone uh, District 75 schools, and um, I work very closely with those principals, and I think today we're taking a step forward. Um, with that, I wish everybody, uh, whatever you may be celebrating, and even if you're not celebrating, have a merry, merry Christmas, a happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, and a happy New Year. May it be a good year for us all. And with that, I vote aye on all. Ayala. I vote no on land use 564, 565, 566, 567, and aye on all the rest. Holden. I and all. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote quickly. Permission granted. I just want to congratulate uh, Land Use Chair Salamanca on introduction 1211A. It was a privilege to work with him as a uh, chair of the Plan Dispositions Concessions Subcommittee on 76 individual projects and project by project getting this 15% set aside by setting this uh, threshold at 15% moving forward that will make the negotiations moving forward, and uh, I just hear my colleagues about the fact uh, where we are citing a lot of this affordable housing, particularly homeless services, and reiterate my desire to bring so to the Upper East Side. We've been building some supportive housing, but we can always build more and would love to build shelters too. Thank you, I vote aye on all. King, Ku. Happy holidays to all my colleagues. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy New Year. And also want to congratulate uh, Council Member Salamanca and Council Member Traeger for passing uh, very important bills uh, before the end of the year. And I have all eye for on all. Thank you. Kozlowitz. May I be excused to explain my vote? <clears throat> I'd like granted. to recognize two street namings in my district. Aaron Adler, who is known as the mayor of Kew Gardens, and to Abe Miller, who led the Little League for so many years, was loved by all, and I'm proud to name streets after these two wonderful men. Uh, I also want to congratulate Council Member Salamanca and Council Member Traeger, and I wish everybody a happy holiday, whatever you celebrate, and um, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to also acknowledge uh, Councilmember Salamanca, Salamanca uh, and his incredible work on this piece of legislation. Um, this bill will do more 
to fight homelessness in New York City than any other action that has been taken in the last 10 years, not only by us, but also by, by the city. Um, this is for the first time um, saying clearly across the city that homeless, homelessness is an issue that we all have to address. It's not just on one community, it's on every community. Um, and, uh, and that the people that are experiencing homelessness in New York City um, very often are there for purely economic reasons because they um, fell behind on their rent, they lost their apartment, um, and the fact that there are 20,000 plus children in shelter every single night, that doesn't even count the kids that are doubled up and unstably housed elsewhere, um, is, uh, is something we should all be ashamed of and do everything we can to address. And so I want to thank all the advocates uh, the How's Our Futures campaign, which has been amazing. There's still a lot of work left to do, but um, this is a big step. This is a very big step. I want to thank Commissioner Banks uh, as well. Um, but a lot of credit goes to Rafael Salamanca for, for holding the line here and insisting on binding legislation to move on past the time that we're in office. Um, and, and just I, so congratulations, Councilmember Salamanca. And I just want to uh, thank the speaker for acknowledging um, Moisha Deutsch, Douglas Miguel Rodriguez, Mindy Ferentz, and um, police officer uh, Joseph Seals, uh, Detective Joseph Seals, um, uh, in the tragic um, shooting last week in Jersey City. I'm very close with, um, with, uh, with Moisha Deutsch's father, Abe Deutsch, and uh, my heart goes out to him and his family. And, uh, to all of the bereaved families, and um, we need to come together and address the scourge of anti-Semitism and hate um, uh, every time we see it. Thank you, and happy holidays to all. I vote aye on all. Maizo. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Permission to explain my vote, please? Permission granted. Okay. Um, I also want to encourage my uh, and thank and encourage my colleagues to vote yes on the package of uh, bills uh, 1604, 1786, and 1810 uh, that was in the Civil Committee on Civil Service and Labor, which addresses workers' compensation and provides survivors' benefits for two members of the city's municipal workforce that lost their lives during the line of, in the line of duty. And so these bills will continue to protect. Uh, the quality of life and support families who uh, loved ones have given their life of our public employees. Um, I, I, I want to address our, our community in Southeast Queens has support for the housing needs of the city's homeless is unmatched and has served as a reflection of our values in, in the Southeast Queens community. We recognize the fact of improving access to affordable housing is central to rolling back the tide of homelessness and to support this equitable proposal that would require 15% set aside for total of the city's new development, but also include, should include a preservation mandate. Queens Community Board 12 has nearly is uh, the highest share of, of homeless shelters throughout the city and, and first in the borough of Queens. Given the recent influx of new affordable housing in areas such as mine in Jamaica uh, in the district, that percentage would certainly spike under this legislation. But we must be cautious to not further the trend of forcing less affluent and historically underdeveloped communities to serve as the host for a majority of the homeless while more established neighborhoods are spared from doing their fair share to help and combat this crisis. This is certainly about equity. However, if this trend does continue, as always, we are ready, willing, and able to take care of our own. I will be abstaining on 12-11 and voting aye on all the rest. Moya Perkins. Thank you. I am going to be um, voting aye on all. 
and especially want to give a shout out to uh, Councilmember Salamanca for intro 1211 and, and because of what it does for a, a very critical problem that has been not only in my community, that is the homeless individuals and families problem, uh, at, but in throughout our city. So this, I think, is a very, very important piece of legislation that acknowledges that we see what's going on and we care. Thank you very much. I vote aye on all. Powers, just permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Good. First of all, I want to congratulate, and I probably will be supporting, uh, Councilmember Salamanca on his legislation, which is one of the most, I think, significant bills we'll do in these next four, in these four years here to actually make a meaningful impact on those people who are in need. And I know that he's worked his, his whatever you want to call it off, and um, I know that many of us join him proudly in voting for this legislation today, which will help so many New Yorkers uh, in their most in their biggest time of need. Um, so I will be proudly voting aye. I also just want to say a, a very uh, sad but f farewell to my friend Lillian Pascone, who's off to uh, not greener pastures, but to New Orleans. And, uh, and uh, I, I've known her since she worked for Council Member Weprin, and particularly on the Rikers Island vote we had this year, worked tirelessly to make sure that the council was in a good place to get there and was a very big part of that historic vote. She will be missed. I know the council and her colleagues will miss her, but we wish her the best of luck. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I uh, just want to, Rafael Salamanca, um, yeah, Rafael Salamanca, the work that you've done related to the 15% uh, set aside for homeless and families is, didn't go unseen while you were fighting for this bill to happen, you made sure you led by example in ensuring that every single project in your district had 15%. Because of it, I, I built the Salamanca rule uh, where I also pushed for 15 every single time we had affordable housing in my district. You, you led the way, uh, and I'm extremely grateful that we've gotten to this point and that this victory, it, it is yours. Uh, I think it's very important that we note that, that le this legislation that Councilmember Salamanca is pushing is taking politics out of affordable housing, taking politics out of uh, homeless families' lives, and it's about time we did that. We can't allow for council members to choose between 15, 10, 5 percent. We can't do that. We all have to be a part of this. We all have to contribute for the greater good, and 15 percent across the board is actually a very small number, and we could all be doing more. If it wasn't for Salamanca, um, we would be playing politics with the lives of all these people in the support of housing. So thank you so much for standing up as land use chair, and it's a great day for you and a great day for the city of New York. I vote aye on all. Richards. Thank you, and permission to explain my vote quickly. I'm happy to speak on intro 710A to renew the J51 incentive program, which provides tax exemptions and abatements for property owners who convert or renovate their buildings, co-ops, and condos with so few opportunities to, assess, to access affordable home ownership in the city, it is critical that we provide as much incentives as possible to ensure that there is still an affordable path to, home, to ownership for our families in Queens, Brooklyn, the Bronx, and Staten Island. In the outer boroughs, many of these homes are the most affordable you can find in the city outside of subsidized programs, allowing thousands of families to gain some true equity in, in, by owning something. While we impatiently wait for the recommendation to reform the inequitable property tax system in New York City, we have to do everything in our power to limit the burden on our families across the city, which is why I'm so proud this year that we are able to renew this program. I'd like to also point out that there are some improvements that can be made to this program at the state level to provide more protections for rent control tenants that live in some of these properties, which I am supportive of and hope to see Albany take up in this next session. In the meantime, though, it's very important that my colleagues and I that represent many of these homeowners did what we needed to do to not delay this, um, this uh, very important program. I'd like to thank Speaker Johnson, Council Members Gudinchik and Vallone, who were steadfast supporters of this renewal, as well as Megan Chin and Audrey Sun in the Legislative Division. I'd also like to thank our colleagues in Albany, Albany for extending this home rule opportunity for us to take this up. Thank you. I have full eye. Rivera. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. Just want to say congratulations to Council Member Salamanca. Thank you. It's, it's a great bill, and I think it'll do a lot of good in the city. And to all of the people that are leaving the council, I've actually learned something from each and every one of you, and I'm so, so grateful. And I know that you're experts in your own lives, and I wish you the best on whatever is next, and I hope I see you soon. Good luck.
I vote aye. Rodriguez. <coughs> Rose. Permission to uh, briefly explain my vote. I just want to say um, thank you to both of my colleagues, both Salamanca and Traeger, for their groundbreaking legislation that will have an impact on generations of vulnerable New Yorkers, some of which are homeless and others which are special needs population. I want to thank you for the work that you've done. It's long overdue, and I want to wish all of my colleagues a happy, safe, and restful holiday. And with that, I vote aye. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Aye on all. Torres. Aye on all. Rodriguez. Aye. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I, I just want to note for the record for my colleagues that there is a big difference between what the mayor has been trying to do in terms of trying to manage a homelessness crisis we have in our city versus what Chair Solomonka and Speaker Johnson are, are actually doing in terms of working to solve a homelessness crisis in New York City. There's a difference between managing and solving. Uh, there is nothing that takes the place of a permanent home. The impact that it has on our school system, where over 114,000 children are homeless, over 30,000 living in shelters. What that means, folks, is that a child in a school that grows accustomed to their teacher, to their counselors, to their social workers, as soon as they get accustomed and get, and get into a good routine, they might have to change their school because they're being relocated to a different shelter or different home setting. So the legislation that we're passing today provides the dignity and respect of a home and a sense of stability to our children and to our families. So Councilman Salamanca, thank you for being a leader because I and the Land Use Committee hear you every single time with every development project to say, what are we doing to solve the homelessness crisis? You lead by example and by your words. And with that, I proudly vote aye on all. Ulrich. May I briefly be excused to explain my vote, Madam Majority Leader? Yes, you may. Thank you. Well, first, I would ask for unanimous consent to also vote on the land use item uh, today that are coupled with general order calendar, and I would like to vote aye on uh, all those uh, uh, land use items and also um, everything that's on today's general order calendar. I want to thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I saw this beautiful uh, Christmas card with your family, absolutely uh, beautiful, and on the outside it had this beautiful handwriting. I almost, I almost think you went to Catholic school. The calligraphy is stunning on this. <laughs> if you did it yourself, I, I have about a hundred cards that you could fill out for me because my handwriting is not nearly as nice as yours. But uh, to you and your family, and to all my colleagues, a blessed Christmas, a happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, and a happy and a healthy New Year. I want to uh, end by just commending uh, my friend and colleague um, Salamanca, Councilmember Salamanca from the Bronx. Uh, I am a co-sponsor of today's bill, and I know that people, uh, some of my colleagues have concerns about the impacts of the bill. Uh, I was very proud to be a supporter of it, uh, to give bipartisan support to the idea that, we can, that, that building shelters, more shelters, is not the solution. We need to, to build more affordable housing and have uh, statutory set-asides for people who have fallen on hard times so that we can transition those families out of the shelter system and into permanent and affordable housing. And this is just one of those steps. Uh, and I know that all of you agree with me when I say that next year we really need to turn up the heat on Albany to get them to pony up to, to provide funding for a real and robust rental subsidy program so that we can get more families out of our shelter system uh, and into permanent and affordable housing and also prevent more people from becoming homeless. Homelessness is not a choice uh, for those families that find themselves there. But I want to commend again in a very special way Councilmember Salamanca for holding the line, for doing a terrific job and for leading the charge to really help people who need the help the most, especially around the holidays. So God bless you all and thank you very much. Valone. Uh, moment to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you very much. Uh, in today's uh, stated, we are renaming John McEway, a cor corporal 
uh, in my district at 156th Street, 56th Street and 14th Avenue. If there ever was a real live veteran who inspired uh, Captain America, this would be Capital John McHugh. He served and was drafted in the United States Army in the 1st Infantry Division in World War II. He fought at the Battle of Normandy. He fought at the Battle of Bulge. He received the Silver Star for gallantry in action, the Bronze Star for meritorious service, the European Theater of Operations ribbon, which contains silver arrowhead for the Normandy invasion, four Bronze Stars, which indicate the major battles he fought in, two presidential unit citations for Crucifix Hill and Hurtgen Forest, the Combat Infantry Badge, and the Fort Eager given by Belgium for action there in the war. In 2014, he was inducted into the State Senate Veterans Hall of Fame, and this past uh, Memorial Day, he was the honoree in the Whitestone and Little Neck Douglaston Memorial Day, marching with his family, and he passed this past July. So I wanted to um, honor him in the way he served and fought for all of us in this country. Uh, he is a true hero, and I thank everyone for including him in today's co-namings. I thank the speaker for the J51 extension, critical for all of us that have co-ops and condos, uh, and also the extension of the senior transportation program for all of Queens. And with that, I wish, to wish everyone a blessed and happy holiday, Christmas, Kwanzaa, and Hanukkah, and a new decade, 2020 is upon us. So God bless all of us. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, and happy new year to you as well. Ben Bramer. I don't know. I think I forgot I and all, by the way, but just in case. Jaeger. I on all, with the exception of intro 1211, on which I vote no, and uh, LU 581, accompanying resolution 1221, in which I abstain. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye, and I want to commend my colleagues, Councilmember Traeger, for all the work that you continue to do, especially for our most vulnerable children. And I want to thank uh, Councilmember uh, Salamanca, because I know that so many people told you this was impossible and that it couldn't be done and that it wouldn't work, but I really applaud your perseverance and your dedication um, for being unrelenting for a community that we all care so very deeply about. Um, many of the people in our shelters um, could be any one of our family members, friends, fathers, mothers, children, so we really applaud you for your dedication and your tenacity. This is gonna make a huge difference in the city of New York and hopefully it will set a trend throughout the nation. Thank you and I proudly vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Happy holidays, I vote aye on all. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 43 affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. With the exception of introduction 1211A, which was adopted by a vote of 38 in the affirmative, three negative, and two abstentions. LUs 564 through 567 and accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, one negative, and one abstention. And LU 581 and resolution 1221, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative and zero negative and one abstention. We'll now do introduction and reading of bills. All bills are being referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you, we will now move into the discussion of resolutions. Are there any members who wish to speak on any of today's resolutions? Seeing none, I will now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on either of today's resolutions should register your vote with the clerk at the dais. <coughs> resolution 40A, an amended resolution calling upon the New York City Employees Retirement System to determine that members are disabled for purposes of disability pensions. If the New York State Workers' Compensation Board determines that a member has a permanent partial disability and the U.S. Social Security Administration determines that a member is disabled for substantial gainful work activity and approved for Social Security disability benefits. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? 
Abstentions. The ayes have it. Resolution 749A, an amended resolution calling upon the New York City Department of Education to establish a chief compliance officer position to ensure compliance with individualized education programs and other requirements for students in special education. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. We will begin with Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I'll be very brief. As the year is coming to an end, I do know that we've had major accomplishments this year, and I want to commend all of my colleagues for the bills that they've introduced, for the positions that they've taught, for the heated discussions that we've had from time to time. And I also want to call everyone's attention to the fact that this year, 2019, is the first year that five of the major beauty talent titles is held simultaneously by black women. Miss World is Tony Ann Singh from Jamaica. Miss Universe is Zonzibini Tunzi from South Africa. Miss America is Nia Franklin. Miss USA Teen, Miss Teen USA is Kaylee Guards, and Miss USA is Chelsea Chris. And the message that Miss World gave was believe in yourself, know that you are worthy and capable of achieving your dreams. You have a purpose. And it's pleasing to see that we are moving from the Eurocentric standards of beauty and we're now affirming that yes, black is beautiful, intelligent, and talented. Thank you. Councilmember Adams, followed by Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you, Majority Leader. Today I'm pleased to introduce Intro 1824, which I encourage my colleagues to sign on to. This bill would require the NYPD, FDNY, and Department of Emergency Management to have access to GPS data regarding the real-time location of school buses transporting students to or from school. This legislation stems from the events of November 15, 2018, when a snowstorm caused havoc in our city, leading to a traffic nightmare. As a result of severe congestion, many students traveling home on school buses did not reach their destination until well after midnight. It is unbelievable that in the year 2019, in a city as large as ours, we can track a snowplow but in the event of an emergency, authorities cannot track our children's school buses. This bill will improve tracking and coordination of in information between bus companies, drivers, NYPD, FDNY, and the Department of Emergency Management to allow for timely updates, especially when there are significant delays. One of our highest priorities should be the safety of our children. And I ask my colleagues to sign on to intro 1824. With that, I say happy holidays. Happy, healthy holidays to all of my colleagues. See you next year. Thank you. Councilmember Menchaca, and we will close. Okay, uh, happy holidays to everyone. I hope you enjoy time uh, with your family and friends to rest and reflect. Um, I am introducing Bill 18, intro 1835. Uh, as the city's data shows, nearly 3.2 million immigrants make New York City their home. This is the largest number in the history of the city. That's roughly 37% of the Quiet population in the, chamber. in the city. 44% of its workforce. Clearly the work almost every major city does, every city agency does, touches the lives of our immigrant neighbors, whether it's education, social service, health, public safety, mental health, et cetera. This merits greater coordination and dialogue between every agency. So in 2017, I introduced a bill to create an interagency task force on immigrant affairs, which we passed that same year. The idea was to create a space for every major city agency that serves immigrant New Yorkers to come together and share information. This way, agencies can identify common problems and share best practices. And we at the City Council, as the people's representatives and policymakers, would have a clear sense as to what those common issues are and the proposed solutions. Unfortunately, as we have learned over many of the oversight hearings in the Immigration Committee, it is our understanding that the task force has met irregularly and the information reported on these meetings is sparse. There is little transparency about what these conversations are like or if the task force is upholding its mandate. So we're going to make it clear for the administration. 
With the introduction of 1835, I am um, asking for requirement at least one quarterly meeting and allow the Speaker of the City Council to appoint a co-chair of the task force to the task force who can call meetings as well. We need every city agency to take seriously the fact that immigrants are not a special subset of the city's population, but a main constituency they serve every single day. Uh, and with that, I want to say thank you again, Feliz Navidad, Happy New Year, and uh, we'll see you in 2020. Thank you so much, Councilmember Manchaca. We will now close out today's meeting with Speaker Corey Johnson. The stated meeting of December 19, 2019 is hereby adjourned. Happy New Year. Thank you all.